لو كنا فاكرين اقل من كده Good afternoon, you're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's headlines. Warplanes from a coalition led by Saudi Arabia continue bombing Houthi targets in Yemen for a second day. In an interview with CBS, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he is open to dialogue with the United States. And documents released by Germany's air transport regulator suggest that German Wing's co-pilot Andreas Lubitz suffered from bouts of heavy depression. Warplanes from a coalition led by Saudi Arabia have continued bombing Houthi targets in Yemen for a second day, including the Shia rebel group's stronghold of Sada. As embattled President Abu Dhabi Mansour Hadi arrived in the Saudi capital of Riyadh, a spokesman of the coalition said the military operation against the Shia Houthi rebels will continue as long as necessary. The source said there were no plans for the deployment of ground forces, but troops were ready for all the circumstances. President Hadi arrived in Riyadh on Thursday with officials saying he will continue his journey to Egypt to take part in a two-day Arab League summit at the weekend. That was the first confirmation of Hadi's whereabouts since the rebels began advancing this week on the main southern city of Aden, where the president has been holed up since fleeing the rebel-controlled capital last month. Saudi Arabia began the air campaign on Thursday night, saying it had assembled a coalition of more than 10 countries, five of them members of the Gulf Cooperation Council. UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon, Sigrid Kag, has held talks with Prime Minister Tamam Slam at the Grand Sarai today. Talks touched on several articles discussed during the UN Security Council meeting concerning the situation in Lebanon. As you know, I've recently returned from New York uh, and Washington, but New York for the regular briefing of the Security Council on, secu on Resolution 1701, but very much also on the whole of Lebanon approach which uh, we have adopted. The Security Council session was very productive. We had also now in-depth discussions with the Prime Minister on a number of elements that came out of the Council, and that is, of course, uh, a shared vision going forward in Lebanon. Uh, the importance of the uh, democratically elected institutions, the presidency, of course, the, the importance of that key role, uh, equally so the how to deal and best address the impact of the Syrian refugee crisis in country, in the run-up to the Kuwait Pledging Conference, equally so the stability and security of Lebanon as the region continues to be very, very volatile, as also demonstrated by events of recent days. So all our efforts are stability, on stability, security and continuity, uh, and in close collaboration with Prime Minister Tamam Salam and, and his government, but also, of course, all local and national uh, partners that are working for the sake of Lebanon and the people of Lebanon in times of uh, volatility and, and insecurity. Interior Minister Nuhar al-Mashnu' says lifting economic sanctions on Iran would embolden it to intervene in the affairs of Middle Eastern states and lead to more sectarian tensions and extremism. In a lecture at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C., Mashnu' said, we are concerned that lifting the sanctions would spare more money and resources for the Iranian government to increase its interventions and influence in the region and contribute to escalating sectarian tension and extremism. He added, Iran considers Lebanon part of its area of influence and its policies in Lebanon shake stability and divide her country. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he is open to dialogue with the United States. Assad was speaking in an interview with U.S. television, uh, with US television network CBS in which he said such dialogue would need to be based on mutual respect. When asked about relations between Syria and the United States, Assad said there was no direct communication. State Department officials recently said Assad will never be part of a negotiation to end the Syrian conflict that is now in its fifth year that officials from his government could be part of the process. On March 15, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry appeared to suggest in a CBS television interview that Washington would have to talk with Assad eventually if peace was to be forged. The suggestion alarmed opposition groups and their backers who hold Assad in particular responsible for the conflict. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has appealed to global leaders, including U.S. President Barack Obama, 
as negotiators raced against a clock to agree on the outlines of a deal on Iran's nuclear program. U.S. officials confirmed Obama and leaders of the, fi the five other powers heading efforts to resolve a 12-year standoff had received the letter, but its content was not known. Rouhani, whose 2013 election led to the current diplomatic push, also phoned the leaders of Russia, China, Britain and France, according to, the, to his office. The Kremlin said hope was expressed for success at the new round of talks in Lausanne after Rouhani spoke to President Vladimir Putin. For his part, Fre French President François Hollande insists on Iran's legitimate right to use peaceful nuclear power and on the need to work towards a lasting, robust and verifiable agreement. The German wing's co-pilot said to have deliberately crashed his Airbus with 150 others aboard into the French Alps suffered serious depression six years ago. This is according to the German Daily Bild, which reported that the co-pilot sought psychiatric help for a bout of heavy depression in 2009 and was still getting assistance from doctors. Andreas Lubitz, age 28, was receiving regular private medical treatment, Bild reported adding that German Wing's parent company Lufthansa had transmitted his informa this information to the LBA. Lufthansa CEO Carson Spohr said Ub Lubitz had suspended his pilot training, which began in 2008 for a certain period, but did not give more details. Lubitz later continued and was able to qualify for the Airbus A320 in 2013. Following the incident, many airlines rushed to change the rules to require a second crew member in the cockpit at all times, Hours after French prosecutors suggested Lubitz crashed the aircraft on purpose. And moving on to the United States, a massive fire broke out after an explosion in a five-story building in New York City's lower Manhattan, leaving 12 injured, three of whom were critical. The explosion caused partial collapse of the Blaze and Gulf five-story commercial and residential building in the East Village neighborhood. Heavy smoke billowed from the building near 2nd Avenue and 7th Street. Flames also spread to nearby buildings. And coming up next, a memorandum of understanding is signed between the Investment Authority in Lebanon and Fondation Liban Cinema to promote investments in the media sector. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching the 420 newscast in English. Under the patronage of the Lebanese Ministry of Information and the Lebanese Ministry of Culture, the Investment Development Authority of Lebanon, in collaboration with Fondation Liban Cinema, a conference was held this morning in the presence of the Minister of Culture, His Excellency Raymond Aregi, and the Minister of Information, His Excellency Ramzi Jrej. A memorandum of understanding was signed between IDAL and the Fondation Liban Cinema to move forward by providing an overview on the types of support and incentives available by the government to the media sector. Uh, I did say I too am a big fan of the movie industry and cinema in general. It's a place where you go to get lost in another world. And uh, in Lebanon specifically, long described as a haven in the Middle East, this country has known its shares of upsets and drama. Many filmmakers and experienced directors have picked this country as the basis for their scripts and their movies, and some of these have been so successful that they have transcended borders, such as, as you mentioned, Nadine Nabakis Caramel, which has won many prestigious awards abroad. However, the media industry is still relatively small in this country and lacks the sufficient support and funds to expand internationally. Although we are in a movie theater, and I've spoken about the cinematic industry, Lebanon's media industry includes television broadcasting, advertising services, audiovisual production, publishing, music production, and others. Some even argue that its future lies in the digitalization, meaning we can be seeing a boom in web series and what is generally referred to as digital media. Investment Authority of Lebanon, our main mandate is to help companies, foreign companies, come and establish in Lebanon. We were established into, uh, in 1994 and we have basically two mandates, investment promotion and export promotion. And when it comes to media, we, we're not only looking to get foreign companies come and produce in Lebanon, but also we want to get Lebanese movie go outside. This is where our role also come in. So as, as I mentioned, we have two roles, investment promotion and export promotion. Um, so basically, if you are an investor and you uh, would like to come to Lebanon, we provide you with so many services 
from market intelligence. So if you're a media company and you want to come to Lebanon, we provide you with all kind of information you want on the sector. I truly believe that creative industries can act as the main driving force for economic growth and employment in Lebanon, especially with the high added value that the media sector can give. I also believe that an economy built on knowledge, skills, competencies and ideas is the new growth model around the world. And this new type of model, I believe, will uh, change the face of the Lebanese economy. Based on that, and in August 2013, His Excellency, the Governor of Banque du Liban, Mr. Diad Salami, issued Circular 331, the famous circular now. Um, through this circular, uh, we mainly introduced for the first time in Lebanon the possibility of equity financing through banks. FFA is the first bank in the Middle East to invest in the media industry. What made it invest in international movies? Well, um, we first came across these movies a little bit by, uh, by chance. Um, and once we started looking uh, closer at these, at these investments, we realized there was a huge potential in investing in movies. Obviously, uh, when you invest in something, you look at uh, the mechanics of how that business works. You try to understand every, every aspect of it, but you also look at the market. And, it was obvious to us that if you were to invest in, in something like that, um, international Hollywood movies, which have a big chance of succeeding in the U.S. and uh, around the world, are the way uh, to go. Uh, having said that, uh, once we, we started our involvement in the movie industry, obviously a lot of uh, local producers and, um, and, and movie experts started coming to us to try and, and explore doing something in Lebanon. Um, we, we did a few, a couple of, of small in, in, uh, investments, participations, um, but it's still a, a very, uh, um, an industry that's very um, preliminary in its uh, funding, in its uh, institutionalized way of doing business, in its market, as it's quite limited. So, What's important, I think, is uh, today is to create the platform. Um, Liban Cinema is the platform today. And I believe that with the proper support, because uh, whenever you are having a, a nascent industry, as Julia mentioned, you need to have all the elements. It's like a baby. You have to nurture the baby. You need to make sure that that baby has the vitamins, has the proper f food and the proper, uh, all the elements uh, to grow this, this uh, nascent baby. So, uh, um, fortunately enough, uh, the movie uh, the movie industry in Lebanon is not nascent. It has uh, some very good uh, people that are working in the movie, whether it's uh, the cineasts or the producers or the uh, writers and so on. However, as Julia mentioned, and as we all know, that only the number of movies uh, will make it that it becomes not just a, uh, something artisanal, but something that has much more potential and it becomes an industry. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Warplanes from a coalition led by Saudi Arabia continue bombing Houthi targets in Yemen for a second straight day. In an interview with CBS Television, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he is open to dialogue with the United States. And documents released by Germany's air transport regulator suggest that German Wing's co-pilot Andreas Lubitz suffered from bout of heavy depression. Those are your headlines for this Friday. I'm Linda Tamim, wishing you all a very nice weekend.